This is the year. This is the year. This is the year I finally lose weight. This, this is, is the, the year. year. This is the year. If I can lose 10 pounds, I'll be happy. I just can't lose the pounds. I struggle with weight all my life. Weight loss. One of the most focused issues in the health and fitness industry, and one of the biggest concerns hitting the Western world in the modern age. At some point, it's been a concern or focus point in everyone's mind, some for a short period of time, others for their entire life. Everyone knows this, including companies who operate in the supplement industries. The weight loss supplement market globally is worth over $44 billion. The weight loss and diet management market in general is worth over $2,135 million and growing. So why do so many people struggle with it? Why are we obsessed with losing weight? And why has it turned into an issue with so many confusing approaches, considering we understand firmly and fundamentally how to lose weight? Calories in, calories out. It's a phrase you'll hear from every fitness influencer, every PT, every guru, and anyone who has been successful with weight and body transformation. It's a rather tiring and predictable phrase now that has carried continued speed and longevity. Yet make no mistake, it's a statement grounded in complete reality and truth. Given that, however, why is it that people still struggle too much with the idea of weight loss? Stating a simple solution such as calories in and calories out clearly isn't the correct approach for those with weight issues. Therefore, additional aspects and considerations must be factored in this overall analysis. Hi, my name's Carl with The Orcs Den. I'm a father of two beautiful small children that keep me on my feet daily. On the day, I work an office job 9 to 5, and at nights, I'm a coach and online trainer. I'm also a drug-free competing bodybuilder and I have a complete passion for everything training, fitness, nutrition of all sorts. In this video we are going to examine in a thorough and meaningful way the important aspects of weight loss, why people struggle with it, what causes it and how to solve it and I promise you it won't be a focused content video of calories in, calories out, simple approach but a much more detailed considered analysis on the topic. Let's begin. What's the best way to reduce? Eat what you want or starve yourself? Starve yourself? Wrong. A half-empty stomach causes hunger tantrums. Now you can avoid hunger tantrums, lose weight naturally and fast. With the RDX Full Stomach Reducing Plan, you fill your stomach... They say the average woman tries 61 diets by the time she's 45 years old, according to the UK Daily Mail. 61 diets? That's 61 both successful and unsuccessful attempts. 61 times that has resolved in returning to the same weight as previous, some worse off. In fact, 97% of those who manage to lose the weight gain it back within three years. Why? What is causing this phenomena? Furthermore, when we consider the fact that 78% of Americans are overweight or obese, something clearly is happening, not just physically, but mentally. And that's exactly where I'm going to tackle this issue, psychologically. As being someone who used to weigh over 16 stone, that's 101 kilo for you Americans watching, and being someone who has coached many with weight loss aspirations and observed those going through dad after dad, the life cycle seems to go like this, and I highlight this more likely from women. They have a body they desire and take for granted at a younger age. Uh, as the years creep on, weight issues arise, developing a poor body image, attempts then get made at that and an exercise. This is when the crucial crossroads are reached. Some go down the road of success and their lifestyle changes. Some go down the road of short-term success or half success, and then they end back up at the same crossroads, more confused when they left. After this point, they attempt another path at the crossroads, a new diet or a new exercise protocol. Again, short-term or no success is made, resulting in the participant to go back to the crossroads yet again. Repeat this method for years and years on end until finally they do one of three things. One, continuing the perpetual loop. Two, admitting defeat or three, adapting a body positivity phase. This phase usually uh, results in blaming societal expectations on their sense of shame and past poor body image and convince themselves that weight gain is not indeed unhealthy and fat is beautiful while watching and reading self-proclaimed overweight gurus on the topic, reinforcing their newfound beliefs. Does this cycle relate to you? In any way does this cycle relate to you? If so, I can promise you, you are not alone. It's an issue as old as modern civilizations arose. For example, in the Victorian ages, women used to wear corsets to hide their weight. As stated, people do make the claim that all of this is social and societal based expectations, driven by the mainstream media, supplement companies, and standard beauty expectations. 
However, for me, it doesn't explain the main factor of it all. The fact that when you're overweight, the brain and mind does not feel right. Having high levels of excess fat and errors you shouldn't annoys the mind. You dislike looking at it, you dislike showing it off, and you dislike having to carry it around in a day-to-day -day life. This, I argue, comes down to the biological fact that humans aren't used to having excess fat, and they aren't meant to have excess fat. This was never really an issue for humans previously in the eras of hunter and gatherers. This has solely only arisen in the modern era in the wide-scale fashion. And from a science and health point of view, it's not even debatable the amount of health risks that arise when someone is overweight or obese. So why do people struggle with their weight? Is it something deeper psychologically, or is it, what I argue, something very simple? I propose to you one of the most direct causal relationships of this. A modern society with quick, fast junk food and easy, addictive temptations around every corner with an assistance and focus on making life more and more easy with the aids of technologies and removes the need for the user to move less. Food deliveries, grocery deliveries, cars, electric bikes, scooters, social programs removing the need for people to work who can work, addicted brain-numbing television, gaming, streaming, TV shows and film. All designed to keep people stationary and not moving. Why bother eating when you're not moving? Exercising or training? It makes you feel like there's no point or no need to satisfy your nutritional demands when your actual demands is just to sit there and perform very mediocre tasks that require little to no energy. All of these factors combined render us all unable to successfully keep the weight off, especially when you factor in a deadly combination of the following. No drive to change, no determination, addictive personality, and a genetic potential for weight gain. And that brings us on to the subject, what causes weight gain? When I was over 16 stone, I know what caused my weight gain. It was simple. It was too much eating and not enough moving. What was too much eating? Two litres of ice cream at night and boxes and boxes of Maltesers. What was not enough moving? Sitting in the office during work, coming home and sitting on my ass playing video games or playing the guitar. What if these things are exactly bad or non-productive? Maybe the two litres of ice cream and the excessive amount of video gaming. But the point remains, I could directly relate the cause of my weight gain to these two things along with, again, a little bit of genetics, which we will look at in a second here. Once I altered these two things, I started to lose weight. Now you may say, there you go, it's that easy. Move more, eat less. That's all well and good, and I encourage that, so much so I have hundreds of videos on the topic, but that matters not to someone who just simply isn't going to do those things. Then it comes down to inspiring, influencing, and changing minds of those who aren't willing, not giving up on them. Now, how do we do this? Well, through educating and convincing, of course. However, some people can be rather or severely reluctant to change and adapt or do the hard things or to accept the fact that the way they're living is not beneficial to themselves or healthy or shortening their lifespan. Now, this is what educated people like us who want our family members and friends to get more healthy in order to live a longer and fruitful life need to be equipped in dealing with common deflections we hear. And that surely has to be genetics. Genetics. I'm naturally this weight. I'm big boned. My parents and their parents were like this. It's genetics. I don't eat that much and I still gain weight. It's just my DNA. Does this sound like you? Have you ever resounded any of these phases in order to deflect away from the potential hard decision you might be forced to take? Well, again, you're not alone and you aren't exactly wrong either. I'm from a community of coaches and PTs that would probably disagree with me in this area as they repeat the common slogan, calories in, calories out. It's that simple, dummy. Now, as stated, this slogan is indeed foolproof and correct, but the fact of the matter is, you're right. Genetics plays a role, a major role in fact. It's simple. No matter what I do, I will never and can never look like Ronnie Coleman, not for the skin reason, but for the physique reason. No matter how hard I try, I could never get to the size of someone in my 600 pound life. I could try taking the drugs more than we took, the food he ate every day, and attempt his training. But that's about it. But I would just end up making myself sick in the process. It's genetics. However, that doesn't mean I can't improve on my already existing physical presence. For people who severely struggle with weight and don't accept that this is based on their own life decisions, may highlight the fact that they don't feel full while eating, or that their genetics just gets them to that size in the first place. Well, this isn't true. Firstly, in a society with an abundance of food, we have been programmed to think that we should eat until we are full. This is not correct. This, in my opinion, is gluttony and indulgence. You should eat until you're not hungry anymore. Secondly, you may have the genetics to get there a certain size, but quite simply, to get to that size, it requires you to fulfill the prerequisites to get there in the first place, which is overeating and not moving enough. It goes back to the property phase. Genetics loads the gun, lifestyle pulls the trigger. At the end of the day, you must accept responsibility. 
and this is indicative to the way society conducts itself. It's no surprise that people don't. So you may be convinced, so far, slightly, that it would be somewhat beneficial for you to change your lifestyle and habits. But how? You may feel like you don't have the willpower to train hours on end or to reduce or change the way you eat. Which leads us on to, how do we solve this? I'm out here at my local walkway first, the three mile. Each day I greet and watch the regulars and locals converse through its greenery and pathways. However, one thing I notice, it's very rare I notice anyone that's particularly overweight. Just an observation. It's easy to make excuses. I've managed to keep my weight and my physique at a certain standard while having a full-time job and managing two small children with my partner. We have no support network, no grannies or granders, and we still manage it. We could debate and argue why this is. I would say it's because when someone is moving daily, they're less likely to get into the habit or rut of sitting stationary, hours on end and overeating. Or perhaps it's a matter of greater discipline and will. Or maybe it's a matter of distraction, being out and exercising. Doesn't leave you much time to be sitting around the house eating. So is this the key to weight loss? Getting, inside, getting outside and walking? Or is it spending hours in the gym? I'm here at my local gym. I come here five to six days a week, but not to cardio train, but to weight train. Without a doubt, there is a massive utility in weight training. However, weight training doesn't exactly burn calories, does it? More accurately, it burns sugar, the preferred fuel source of the muscles. So why weight train when your focus is weight loss? Well, it's simple physics. The more muscle you gain, meaning the greater ratio of a muscle and fat you hold in your body, requires the body to expend greater energy demands, meaning greater burning of calories. Muscle weighs more than fat, so in order to do so in order to move muscle around the body, it requires more energy to do so, resulting in a more efficient resulting in more efficient and greater amounts of calorie burning. For example, someone with more muscle mass over fat will burn much more calories during a 30 minute walk than someone with more fat than muscle mass on their body. This right here in my opinion is one of the most appealing factors and keys to weight loss and mastering this will give you a better shot of keeping the weight at a maintainable standard. But what do coaches say on the matter? What do coaches with high success rates say about weight loss? For that, I think we need to turn to bodybuilders. Bodybuilders, I believe, are masters at this. They successively lose weight year in, year out, on season, on demand, when required, with pure discipline and consistency. This is the people we need to turn to. For this, I travel to speak with my dear friend and sports masseuse, Sam Dando. Sam has had years in the industry. He's a drug-free competing bodybuilder. He's won several competitions. He's a sports therapist and a personal trainer. He's seen through many clients in his past years, managing them in weight loss and muscle gains. I believe Sam is the perfect person to address on this matter. Hello, Sam. Hello, mate. Sam, if someone was to come to you wanting to lose weight or they were struggling with their weight, what would your approach be or where do you think the problem would be coming from in the first place? I'd like to look into the background of their day-to-day -day physical output um, and I'd like to then ask them about their, um, you know, their daily eating habits. If they could outline to me what sort of things they're eating day to day, if they have set amount of meals, if they snack a lot, um, and then I would look into working out their calorie deficit they need to consistently stay in. And then we just look about getting them moving more. Um, if they're doing any resistance training to begin with or playing any sports, and we'll just make a plan of attack then of them consistently making better nutritional habits, staying within a calorie deficit, moving more, and just being consistent with it. So you would take it from a really simplistic approach then, basically no bullshit, calories in, calories out, move more. Simple as that. No bullshit. No reinventing the wheel. No juice plus, no pyramid schemes, no that bollocks.
It was uh, very interesting talking with Sam. Um, obviously, a coach of his calibre. Um, he's very methodical in his approach, and that's why he's had such a high success rate. Um, <clears throat> and for someone, you know, that will do the hard work and wants the most concise, direct way to lose weight, um, that is definitely the approach to go for, no doubt. But I can't help but think for the people that just simply won't do the work, or the people who won't go to a personal trainer or a coach, or people who won't go into the gym. What's their strategy? You may be thinking, so I understand how to lose weight and what could be causing my excessive weight gain. So in conclusion, what is the absolute best, most direct, most successful long-term approach I could take? I'm going to give you the most direct answer here. From my past personal experiences, from my knowledge on the topic, my observations psychologically, and my understanding from coaches such as Sam. Eating less than you are now and moving more will, without a shadow of a doubt, result in weight loss. That is, of course, not considering medical issues such as thyroid conditions, etc. How to eat less and move more? Some will answer this directly and firmly without any emotion because it's easy, isn't it? Eat less and move more. Well, it is, but also isn't. I, my advice to you, the listener, find a movement that you enjoy. Training, running, walking, CrossFit, powerlifting, general gym attendance, classes. And if you don't enjoy one, learn to enjoy one. If you can't pick one, get outside and walk in the beautiful sceneries at your disposal. It costs nothing and it is hyper effective. Throughout the day, distract yourself with other important things, put more responsibility on your shoulders that keeps you physically and mentally occupied. Not only will it reduce the amount of stationary time you have that you may revert to just eating when you're bored, but you'll be moving more and mentally feel much more fulfilled at the end of the day. In the food aspect, many of you already may be eating the key healthy foods that people like myself already eat and you just don't know it yet. Consider this, staple dishes like spaghetti bolognese. That's lean mince and pasta, two great sources. Homemade curries. That right there is chicken or beef in there. And rice, two great foods. Homemade burgers and chips. That's lean, meat, lean mince again, and potatoes. Eggs and porridge, that's two superfoods right there I use daily. The problem that may be arising for you in these foods is the content in which you lavish them in. Heavy cooking oils, heavy sauces. Deduct these two options of less calories and I promise you, you'll see the physical changes on your scales and on your body rather swiftly. Get into the habit of finding the meals that you enjoy, that you already cook daily, but change its ingredients slightly to reduce the calories. It may not taste as nice for the short term, but after a few weeks or a month, you won't notice the difference anymore. Ensure in the mornings you eat, get a solid, slow digesting carb meal. This will set your metabolism in a good spot. A bowl of oats and a protein drink perhaps is perfect. You'll be left much less hungry for the first half of the day with a consistent steady flow of energy instead of starving yourself through fasting or keto. It's okay to eat several five to six small meals throughout the day, as long as the servings are modest. So get outside, enjoy the outdoors, and get more steps in every day, and adjust the food you're already eating and leave the junk food treats to the weekend, again, in moderation. My final message, there is people around you that care for you greatly, that actually care and want you in their lives for as long as humanly possible. Don't do them a disservice by shortening your time on earth. Don't do yourself a disservice by thinking you're only worth a short period of time on this earth. Things can always be better than what they currently are at. The possibilities of mental satisfaction is endless when you're in control of the most fundamental part of your existence, your body. I've been caught from the Ox Den. Happy New Year.